What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because Trickstar is the deck we're going to be showing off and this deck got a huge boost in the most recent ban list. Not only did Light Sage come back to 2 but Scapegoat came back to 3. This deck is very very viable now. I think this deck is super super fun to play and I'm excited to be showing it to you guys. But make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content especially for the next week or so. It's going to be daily post ban list deck profiles so there's going to be a lot of videos coming up there's going to be a lot of post ban list stuff coming up especially with this ban list a lot of stuff is now playable again so i think it's going to be really really fun i hope you guys do enjoy i don't want to keep you guys for much longer so let's get right into the video okay so i'm really excited to get into this profile but i do want to mention something just before we get into the list as you guys can see here this is a more of a control list a list that really wants to get into reincarnation into scythe abuse a lot of really powerful cards in today's game however i do want to say that when i was testing this there's a ton of different ways you guys can build this deck i mean i tried albaz like branded trickstar that's very possible they're all white monsters so it's very easy to use you can try the ready fusion builds that can spam out rank 5 monsters there's so many different builds for this deck so i just wanted to show you guys a more pure build of trickstar a build of trickstar that's a lot more control and i think it's pretty good against today's metagame so we're going to be starting off here with triple trickstar candina of course triple trickstar licorice one lily bell as well as two Corobane. Now, I really like three Licorice in this build specifically because this is more of a control build. You do want to burn your opponent. And of course, as I said earlier, you do want to get into reincarnation. The best like combo really is having Licorice and reincarnation because you're doing a bunch of burn damage. And then of course, withdrawal and Lockbird. We all know how powerful that is, right? So I really like triple Licorice in this. Licorice also helps you dodge Imperm, Veiler, etc, etc with Candina. So that's why I really like playing triple Licorice. Now, if you're playing other builds, I'm going to mention this now. If you're playing other builds, and maybe in the future, I will show you guys some different ways to play the deck but in other builds maybe you can cut licorice down to two in this build specifically though i definitely think three licorice is the way to go so that's it for the trickstar monster count and that's what i think all you really need and then of course you're playing one terraforming because you got light stage back to do oh baby i'm excited light stage back to two is actually pretty big for this deck people are sleeping of how powerful this is and it being back to two means that there's a chance that it can come back to three in our next list. Let's hope. But it being back to two is really, really good, of course, because you guys know when you guys activate this card, you can add a Trickstar monster to your hand. You can summon the Candina that you add. Let's say if you don't have a Candina, you can go Candina. You can search your reincarnation. And now you have like your combo started, right? If you open your Candina, then you can Light Sage first to search a Licorice. And then now Licorice essentially is going to help you dodge any hand traps potentially with the Candina. So that's why I really like Light Sage. Of course, we all know how powerful this card is. And don't sleep on this card. If you activate this card, the first thing, let's just say against a branded matchup, right? The, the easiest way to go about it. You go light stage, you can target their set card. If you know it's a branded in red, you can target it. They have to brand it in red at that moment. So the really cool thing about this deck is it has like these really niche ways of playing around and playing through the meta. And the really nice thing about light stage, of course, is we know that every time your trickstar monster inflicts battle damage or effect damage, you inflict an extra 200 points of damage. So of course it combos well with licorice as well. So then we're playing, of course, triple reincarnation. I mean, and triple droll. Drolls might as well be a trickstar monster at this point because this combo is just detrimental. Like this is your FTK combo right over here if you open reincarnation droll. Now the cool thing about this combo now is a lot of decks, and I'm actually gonna just give you a really cool meta example because I really wanna tell you guys like how to play this deck at a competitive level. So let's say we're talking about branded Despia, right? Tragedy triggers when it's banished to search a card, right? So let's say you only have one reincarnation and droll in your hand. If you go reincarnation and then your opponent banishes their hand, they're gonna trigger their tragedy and you can go droll right after that. Now that's not the FTK combo because they'll still have cards in their hand, of course, to play with, but they're pretty much stuck with the cards in their hand. So if they draw into an Aluber, doesn't matter. If they draw into any of their search cards, doesn't matter. So that's why I re find really cool about reincarnation in today's format. Again, like I said with Light Stage, there's a lot of niche ways that you guys can play against branded, which is probably going to be the best deck of the format and still be very competitive it makes it so that now just one reincarnation withdrawal is still very powerful but also keep in mind that you still do want to turbo out reincarnation so of course the ftk is having two reincarnation and then we're playing triple ash blossom for the hand traps now triple ash blossom of course is very very necessary especially with brandon fusion in the game today and then this is the one card i wanted to talk about the most and that's the dd crow now this card could be potentially more traps and this is the thing that i was back and forth with right but then i was like man the one thing with trickstar is it 
it really struggles going second. And DD Crow is just so powerful in today's format. Let's talk about decks, for example, like any of the adventurer decks. If they foolish burial their water enchantress, you can DD Crow it so they can't get into that engine. If you talk about Despia and they go branded in red, you DD Crow the target for the branded in red. You can also DD Crow any other targets that they might need for their fusion summons, so that could be very powerful as well. So DD Crow is one of the best hand traps in today's format. Now, the other way to play this is honestly just cut the DD Crow entirely and don't play that in your hand trap lineup and then instead you guys can play more trap cards solemn strike is the one that i was leaning towards but you guys can play torrential you guys can play idp idp is not bad this format either so you guys can play idp especially if abc therion or plant therion become a thing you guys can definitely play idp in here as well because of course you guys can see that we're playing a control build with trap trick so trap trick can search the idp here as well so i just want i just want to mention that there's multiple ways to play this i just wanted to talk about this specifically because i think dd crow generally is just really really important even against the therion plant deck and, and the and the ABC and uh, machine theory on decks DD Crow is still really good against them too because if you banish a piece yes they'll still be able to summon the theory on but uh, they won't really be able to get to Buster. So that's really powerful as well. DD Crow is just really good generally. So that's why I decided to play DD Crow because it helps you a little bit more going second. This deck is obviously still a going first deck. However, it's really nice to have something like DD Crow, which hits everything in the meta. But then again, if you wanted to play something like IDP here instead, I, I would recommend that or Solemn Strike as well. That could be very possible. So that's really up to your discretion. I just really want to show you guys different ways to play the deck and different ideas that I was bouncing around. But yeah, I ended up with DD Crow here at the end of the day. Then we're playing Triple Infinite Impermanence, of course this card is amazing in today's format and it's a trap card that can be searched off trap trick and then not only do we get light stage to two we got three scapegoat back. One of the biggest problems with this deck is that it didn't have big enough monsters to beat over some of the meta cards. Now, yes, we got Korobane, which kind of helps with that because Korobane is a pseudo honest, essentially. However, what scapegoat lets you do now is it lets you control the boards. It also lets you not get OTK'd, funny enough. There's a lot of times where if you're low on life points, you can live another turn just because of scapegoat. But then on top of that, if you set the scapegoat and your opponent can't like OTK you, push for damage, etc., etc., all you got to do is flip the scapegoat on your end phase and now you have access to something like access code talker and then boom now you have an otk machine and otk engine in the deck that can essentially win you the game so the really cool thing about this deck is you're doing so much burn damage with the licorice with the reincarnation with the light stage with potentially the candina you're doing so much burn damage all you need is that extra push of damage and that's what the scapegoat essentially does for you so scapegoat being at three is a big big push for this deck don't sleep on this card being back at three you definitely need to be playing three scapegoat then to round off the spells we're playing one call by the grave of course call by the grave is just such an insane card you can't not be playing this and then you're playing three pot of extravagance now i did want to play cross out but i kind of noticed that i'm like this deck doesn't really lose to hand traps that hard to be honest with you i mean sure you can ash a light stage or ash candina first of all you have licorice to dodge a lot of the other hand traps so not specifically ash but you know you can dodge veil or imperm so that's why i was thinking i was like man cross out is not really that important because dd crow doesn't hurt you that much ash i guess kind of hurts you a little bit with the candina and the light stage but that's that's really it right so that's kind of why i decided the one call by the grave enough but i did want to play three extravagance here because extravagance is consistency for the deck and you can just play all the monsters that you need to play at three essentially and then and you can just draw two cards for free going first this is insane and then we're playing two sanctum as well as one scythe bro they didn't ban scythe for some reason they didn't ban scythe so because they didn't ban scythe might as well just abuse it and this deck can abuse it because you are playing the sanctums that you can of course draw into with something like extravagance or just draw in your opening hand but you can also draw into trap trick which we're playing three trap trick here as well now trap trick is really good because it gets you into your reincarnation if you have a reincarnation droll which is very powerful but it can also get you into a sanctum and locking your opponent out of the extra deck can be very very powerful in today's format so that's why i did want to play the two sanctum as well as the one scythe i don't know why they didn't ban this card it makes no sense to me I, I, they, this card should have been gone but whatever we can use it so trick star is kind of cool in that sense you guys can see that this deck has multiple win conditions and that's the really cool thing about this deck because you're not focused on one way to win so for example the burn engine is kind of like a way not necessarily to win you the games but it pushes your opponent to a point where you just need a little bit more damage to end up winning anyways so the burn engine is a win con essentially the reincarnation to draw is a win con that's an fdk like if you reincarnation draw it's an fdk you're winning the game right so reincarnation draw combo you have the scapegoat for an otk combo you have the scythe lock there's so many ways to win the game with this deck that's why I think this deck is very underrated in today's format. I think it's going to be very, very fun. Then lastly, to end off with the extra deck, we're just playing three of all the cards we need for scapegoat. So three link Karibo, three link Spider, three Phoenix, 
one security dragon i actually decided to play one security dragon because this card if it's co linked you can target a monster your opponent controls and just bounce it which is really really cool because a lot of time it will be co linked and it just needs two monsters so you can actually just use two tokens you don't have to use two monsters with different names unlike the nightmare monster so i kind of wanted to play one of this instead of the cerberus but you guys can cut phoenix down to like two maybe play a second one of this i don't know i just wanted to try something different then we're playing three unicorn and two axis code talker of course you have to play multiples of these because of the extravagance but i will say one thing this deck is very honestly affordable and budget for the most part other than the access code talker so don't worry about that if you guys can't get your hands on access code or access code is a little bit too expensive or you can't get multiple access code you can only have like you only have one for example don't worry i'm gonna give you guys some other options you guys can play boral sword dragon here instead boral sword is a lot more budget than access code and boral sword like i said with all the burn damage anyways boral sword is most of the time going to be enough for game anyways so that's why i really like the boral sword so you guys can put that in instead of an access code so if you have no access codes you guys can play two boral swords if you have one access code you can play one access one boral sword doesn't really matter and then you guys can also play cerberus here as well if if you guys wanted to try something other than security dragon or you wanted to just play two phoenix or two unicorn play a cerberus as well the nice thing about these cards is they get you draw cards which is kind of nice because it always replenishes your hand but yeah that this is just some different cards that you guys can play instead but for the most part i wanted to show you guys that this deck is pretty budget and i think it's really cool in that sense so yeah i don't know you guys should try this deck out it's really fun you have multiple wing cons you can play the scythe you can this is going to really annoy your opponent i'm going to be honest with you this is going to be a really annoying deck if you're playing it against your opponent. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'm super excited about Trickstar being back. I mean, now that Light Sage is at two, very likely that we could get three Light Sage in the next ban list. Konami? Konami. But yeah, this is more of like a pure take on Trickstar. I think this is actually the best way to play it really, but there's a lot of other different ways to play it. If you guys want to see that in the future, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you guys have any ideas, suggestions, or any cool things that came up when you guys were testing with this deck, let me know as well. That's how we get better together as a community. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko, signing out. Peace.